Welcome back to The Clueless Father. Now we're going to take up the second segment of The Clueless Father videos. And this really takes you from week 36, 38 up until the point of birth. Now, a misconception that a lot of people had, or at least I for sure had and the people I spoke to, is that birth goes by nine months. Really, when your gynecologist or doctor refer to it, they'll talk to you about it in weeks. And they'll tell you that at week 38, the pregnancy has come to term. What does that mean? It means you need to come to term with being a father because at any point, a little surprise package can arrive for you and mom. The whole point of these videos and everything I've tried to you know, at least point out up until now, is be ready. Don't have a last minute panic. You don't need it. You want to just be able to enjoy as much as possible having your baby. If you're completely freaked out about everything up until that point, your enjoyment level is going to be at minimum. You can be spending the previous months getting ready so it's a nice gradual process, or you can freak out at the last minute. If you haven't gotten ready by this point, there's no need to throw yourself off a building or jump off the nearest bridge. But what you do have to do is you have to run to get ready because it's not fair to the baby that they arrive and you don't have anything ready. The good news is it doesn't take a few weeks, it doesn't take a few months to get all this stuff ready. You can actually do it if, in a few days. It's going to be a frantic, crazy few days, but you can do it. So what you want to do is you want to get the minimum stuff under control first. In terms of a crash course on if you're at week 38 and you haven't done anything to get prepared, look over the previous videos real fast. Find out what's the stuff you absolutely have to have. But I can tell you it's going to be diapers, the hygiene supplies that I've gone over such as the anti-rash cream, the shampoo for washing the baby, the sponge for washing the baby, the minimum clothes of body suits, the burp rags, the puke rags, if it's cold, a few of the warmer garments. Next, you're going to want to make sure the house is basically set up. Now, by this I'm talking about does the baby have a place to sleep? So, get that stuff under control. Ideally, you can have a crib ready at home. If not, at least get the little thing that will hold the baby on the side for the first little bit so that they're safe if they throw up while they're sleeping. Making sure that you have the bottles, the bottle sterilizer, and the alternate baby food if your pediatrician recommends it. If you haven't at this point, it's really important that you finalize the hospital. You need to go to the hospital, you need to find out what the rules are, and you need to make it clear to them that you're going to be in the delivery room and that you're going to be following your baby all the way to the maternity ward. This is something I recommend just to make sure that you know where your baby is and that he or she gets to the right location. It's best if you take mom there with you so you guys can get comfortable with the hospital and comfortable with the staff. Depending on your doctor or gynecologist, they may bring their own staff to the hospital to do the delivery, but the hospital may supply its own staff. If possible, meet them ahead of time and introduce yourselves so that you're comfortable when you arrive for the delivery to occur. The other thing is make sure you understand what the rules of the hospital are in terms of visitors, visiting hours, and any other specific rules that the hospital may have. If you understand these and you know what they are, it'll just make sure there's no surprises when you actually come to have the baby. As soon as you finalize the hospital and met the staff and determine that's where the birth is going to be, it's best to talk to the hospital staff as well as the gynecologist and go over with them silence in the delivery room. Now I'll tell you why. This is going to be one of the most intense moments of yours and your wife's life. You don't need it marred with cell phones ringing and anesthesiologists talking about golf scores to friends. If I sound a little bit upset at the point, it's because I experienced something like that. It's really distracting and you're going to want to throw the guy across the room. So just get it settled ahead of time that any talking that occurs during the delivery and up until the point where the baby goes to the maternity ward is kept to a minimum. If there's any conversation needed, it should just be the professional conversation that they're having, such as passing the scalpel or doing other things, but no random conversation that's going to distract you or your wife from this amazing moment. It's intense. You don't need the distraction. So make sure that he and the hospital staff agree to this ahead of time. It's important. Believe me, you're going to be pissed when it happens otherwise, so just have the conversation.
The next thing we're going to talk about is natural birth or cesarean. What's the difference? Okay, well obviously a natural birth, the baby just comes straight out the hatch and that's how it goes. A cesarean is right above the vagina, they're going to make a small cut in mom's tummy so that the baby can pass through. This is a fairly major surgical procedure, but it's also a fairly simple one. You can't be fixed in the ideas that if it's not a natural birth, it's not right. That's just not true anymore. That's a real antiquated form of thought. The key thing is what's going to be better for the baby and what's going to be better for mom. There are actual tests where they can establish whether or not the baby is going to fit through the hole that it needs to go through or it's not. If the baby is not going to fit and you and mom are going to insist on a natural birth, what's going to happen is a long and arduous period of labor followed by a cesarean. One of our friends had this happen to them and I can tell you, find out from the gynecologist which it needs to be and just do that. If you're worried that the gynecologist is just choosing a cesarean because it's an easier way to deliver a baby, get a second opinion. Like I said, there's tests that you can do to actually accurately determine this, especially at week 36. Now what are the main reasons why you might have to have a cesarean delivery? In our specific case, it's simply because my wife was too small and the baby was too big. They have tests that they can do to actually measure this ahead of time. I wouldn't recommend going with a cesarean unless it was absolutely necessary. But I also wouldn't recommend sticking with a natural birth if it was going to be a problem for mom and the baby. The important point to remember is discuss it with your gynecologist and make sure that you settle ahead of time what's going to be needed. It isn't going to be until about week 36 or 38 that you're really going to find out. If a cesarean has been decided on, the gynecologist is going to program it for week 38 of the pregnancy. That is the ideal week to do the cesarean because it's easiest for the baby at that point. So just be aware of the fact that at week 38 if you're having a cesarean, you're going to be a dad. In terms of what you need to do to prepare for a natural birth, I gotta be honest with you, we were preparing for a natural birth up until about week 35. We were doing the breathing classes and other things like that that the gynecologist recommended to us, but when we found out that it was gonna be a cesarean, we stopped doing anything to prep for that and we focused more on getting ready for the cesarean. So if it's gonna be a natural birth, just talk to your doctor or your gynecologist about what needs to be gotten ready for that. He'll tell you or she'll tell you and just do that. What do you need to do to prepare for a cesarean? Well, cesarean is actually a much easier birth to prepare for. And unfortunately, in some countries, doctors will simply opt for a cesarean because it is easier. If you feel like your doctor or gynecologist is programming you for a cesarean, but is not taking the factors into account, there are tests you can do and you can get second opinions where they actually take the measurements to tell you. You won't be able to get those measurements until week 36, maybe even week 37. But once it's determined that it is going to be a cesarean, your gynecologist or your doctor is going to program it for a week 38 delivery. That tends to be the ideal time and it's also great to know exactly when is week 38, which is why I recommend tracking the periods from the beginning so you know exactly when the pregnancy starts. If you haven't, don't worry about it too much because the doctor can take the measurements and the ultrasounds to get a pretty good estimate of exactly what week the baby is at. The important thing to remember is your gynecologist is going to guide you and mom through this. Don't worry about it too much. Just talk to your doctor, talk to your gynecologist, and make sure that you discuss with them whether natural birth or cesarean is going to be necessary. The later into the pregnancy is when he'll accurately be able to tell you, but just discuss it with them and then you can find out and be ready, whichever way it is. Just don't forget, whatever is better for mom and better for the baby, that's the way you want to go.